Welcome back to Maury's Music. My name's Maury Rutch. And I'm Spoon Phillips. And we have a lot to talk about. How you doing today, Spoon? Well, Maury, I'm actually very well, thank you. I thought it might be a nice change of pace. If I were to do a poor impersonation of Sir Alec Guinness as Spymaster George Smiley from Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, don't you agree? Sure, when are you <laughs> going to do it? Ooh! 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 ooh. <laughs> yes, it's funny, when, I, when I'm watching something, particularly a series, and if I'm doing any binge watching, I will wake up in the morning and my internal dialogue will basically be the character. <laughs> and so <laughs> I'm re-watching these, uh, these 1980s spy series that my dad was a big fan of. And, uh, and so I woke up with Alec Guinness's George Smiley in my uh, head today. <laughs> well, we, got, we got problems then, because I watched the whole Austin Powers trilogy last week. <laughs> And it's not my fault. We would never know the difference there. <laughs> it's not entirely my fault. Clayton from Martin vs. Martin turned me on to all that stuff. And I've been like falling in love with Dr. Evil's character. Oh, you know? of course. Of course. Here, I thought you would base your, your persona on Dr. Evil all these years. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny that we were talking to my sister last week and she made some kind of reference and She's one of those people where if you accidentally say anything that's also a song lyric or something from a movie, she just completely goes into that. She said, what's that movie? What's that movie? I said, which one? You know, the one I like a lot where the guy goes into space. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the guy with the, it's the egg and he has the cat, you know, so it's, it's just. <laughs> I would have never guessed that one. Well, I oh, was really? going to say, uh, yes, I was, yeah. I mean, I would immediately think of, I don't know, there's the reluctant astronaut, there's a zillion space movies, but yes. And, um. I was going to offer a segue by saying, going back to the spy stuff, if I recently finally got to see that movie Bridge of Spies with Tom Hanks, and uh, which was got me kind of on going back to the Cold War spy interest stuff. And, um, and we're actually going to be speaking about uh, bridges today. Oh, I like what you did there. That's some top shelf <laughs> stuff. That's uh, you have my complete adoration about that. I would have never gone that direction. So before we do go that far, let me bring you back and say thank you very much. You are listening to Martins and More with Spoon Phillips. It's not the Spy Trilogy podcast. It's not the Dr. <laughs> Evil podcast. But I do want to thank you guys for being here and let you know that this is season one, episode 25. And the reason we're telling you that is it's not just the Bridge Pins episode. It is the Martins and More season finale. <laughs> so what we're going to do, we're going to get into a really good conversation about bridge pins and their effect on tone. And I do want to announce that we're going to take a little break after this episode and come back at you on Monday, November 14th. So after this episode, make sure you go back and listen to any episode you might have missed in season one. You're going to have a few weeks to catch up. Very good, Maury. Spoon, have you listened to everyone? Only in my dreams. Yeah, actually, I've enjoyed them very much. I've enjoyed uh, the uh, YouTube versions where people are allowed to leave comments. And um, I hope uh, people will continue to do that. For those who are not listening via YouTube, we would certainly still be interested in any comments, questions, uh, suggestions uh, by simply uh, sending us email. That's correct. Please use support at marismusic.com, and we certainly do look forward to your opinions. Let's get this party started. Across season one, we've told you lots about the Martin guitars and several series. We've talked about the Blue Ridge guitars. We've gone into detail about guitar parts, guitar strings. We're going to tell you today about a sometimes overlooked part. There are some people that think they don't make much of a difference. Some people aren't sure what to get, but bridge pins and their effect on tone is the subject of today's discussion. And Spoon, let's kick things off by me asking you off the cuff, on your Martin guitars currently, which kinds of bridge pins are you using? Well, I think that would be a marvelous trivia question, actually, because I've mentioned it more than once online, on my own websites, and on uh, various uh, podcasts. So I'm gonna hold off on there and reveal it when we get to them, because they're actually somewhat exotic. All right, Spoon, we couldn't have a proper episode on bridge pins without first telling our listeners what bridge pins are. That's correct. Uh, on acoustic guitars, 
that have a pin bridge. Uh, these are the small pins that secure the string into the bridge. Um, the traditional classical guitar bridges don't use pins. They, uh, they have little holes on the sides of the bridge that the strings pass through. And in the fashion of a lute, they will get uh, tied into a little knot so it sticks in the hole, or they'll even be tied around the bridge like they do in lutes. Depends on the type of instrument. You can get nylon strings for classical guitars that have uh, pins in them if you happen to have a guitar that has a pin bridge. Um, but uh, by and large, you usually only have pin bridges on steel string guitars. And you'll notice on your strings that you have that little grommet or little round metal, uh, what some people call the ball. Um, and the ball end of the string goes into the slot in the bridge and then the bridge pin uh, fits down inside snug enough that when the string is being put under tension as you tighten the string, that it keeps it in place. And it also helps uh, secure it against the bridge it's um, bridge plate underneath, which is typically made out of wood, but not always. And they, that's a major part of tone production is the vibration from the string getting into the bridge plate and the bridge on top, and then it sending that energy into the soundboard. And the, uh, in the case of a, most Martin guitars, an X brace uh, that's on the underside of the soundboard. So um, bridge pins uh, are, you, greatly overlooked, as Mari has said. Um, uh, some people don't care what they look like. Some people change them in and out. You'll see people that have uh, bridge pins of different colors, even different materials on different strings um, because they don't think they do much or they don't really care one way or the other. There's lots of reasons to uh, get different bridge pins. And uh, some of them have to do with aesthetics. Um, they, the cosmetic look uh, that you might be going for with your instrument. But there's a great many of us that also look to bridge pins as, uh, you know, a subtle way of tweaking the uh, voice and the sonic personality of an instrument. I completely agree with that last thing, especially a lot of our customers will ask us, which bridge pin should I put on my guitar for specific sounds? And we'll certainly dive into those details throughout this program. But I'd like to compare it to it's not the cake, but it is the icing. And you're not going to take a mahogany guitar with a mahogany sound, put some bridge pins on it and change what that guitar sounds like. But you certainly could influence and subtly change the sustain, the amount of overtones and the harmonics. And, you know, and we'll get into it material by material, but when you get a guitar sound that you like and you found the pick that you like and you found the strings that you like in much the same way, you should also experiment or consider experimenting with the bridge pins that you like. Because if you're a listener who does admit the difference a pick can make and the different strings can make, I'd follow suit with the way that bridge pins can actually change your tone or at least shift it in a certain direction. Now, back in, um, I don't even remember what year it was, probably in the 1980s, uh, that uh, old evening uh, news program, Nightline, did a feature on the Martin Guitar Factory. And it uh, focused on Stephen Stills and his signature model, which was the D45 Stephen Stills, which was really the first time that Martin took an artist's particular vintage Martin and made uh, a concerted effort to recreate it. Now, it's not nearly as accurate a recreation of a Martin from the 1930s as something from the Authentic series, but it was still uh, a marvelous uh, instrument. And, and in that program, Stephen Stills uh, famously said, playing his old Maybell, as he named that uh, D45, this is a, a box that rattles and everything that you do or everything that you put on it and everything you do to that box is going to affect how beautifully it rattles. And I, you know, I think we can just start talking about tone right now by simply saying, this is not going to affect the tone of an instrument, the personality of an instrument to the degree of the material of the saddle or even uh, what wood is used for the bridge. 
this is not going to affect it as much as the tone woods or the type of bracing or the, and so on. But it can definitely have a noticeable difference. I think most people are aware that most acoustic guitars out there, including Martin's, are sold with plastic bridge pins. And there's a zillion people out there playing extremely uh, wonderful guitars who uh, just continue to use the plastic bridge pins they came with. And I'm one of them. I've definitely had guitars where I've had the bridge pin, plastic bridge pins you know, for long periods of time before I really kind of got into uh, investigating um, the qualities of different bridge pins. In the 1930s and 1920s, Martins, by and large, were shipped with plastic bridge pins. And the reason that is, is well, a couple of reasons. One is plastic at that time, those kind of polymers were really brand new as a, as a product. Um, Bakelite was probably the first mass produced plastic, uh, what we would call a plastic now. And uh, the faux tortoiseshell that people were making to replace real tortoiseshell. And at that time, plastic was actually a pretty amazing product. This, this liquid that you could put into any kind of shape and then harden it. And it immediately started replacing all sorts of things that had previously been made from wood or animal uh, products. And uh, it, you know, it immediately started replacing whalebone, for example, that was used for all kinds of stuff. So it was also cool. It was an extremely interesting, cool thing. So that's why you'll see pre-war guitars made by people like Washburn and Gibson and, and Martin even that have these plastic faceplates of faux tortoiseshell or, or really uh, sparkly plastics, you know, that reflect light in really interesting ways and all that stuff. It was considered uh, a pretty amazing thing. Um, but the other reason Martins immediately started using plastic bridge pins when they became available and affordable was because the plastic is inert. It does not shrink and it does not expand with the humidity and with heat. And so it's a, it's a safe uh, thing to ship a guitar across multiple time zones and weather and, and so forth. So you're not going to get the bridge pin swelling up suddenly um, or, or shrinking up suddenly and possibly, uh, and possibly causing issues with the bridge. And that's one of the reasons they do it to this day. You can certainly buy Martins that have wooden bridge pins uh, straight from the factory. Various models uh, do that. And um, the Authentic Series, you'll notice that the bridge pins used for an Authentic Series guitar is based on the bridge pins that were on the original model. So there have been Authentic Series instruments that had plastic bridge pins, and they've had um, and there have been authentic series models that have had wooden bridge pins and bone bridge pins and so forth. So maybe I'm going to turn this over uh, to Mari now so that he, uh, he can maybe start with the basic options with the uh, regular plastic bridge pins, and then we can move into to, uh, some of the more interesting materials. Everything you said is certainly agreeable, and I'd also like to add Many of our customers and many of our listeners complain, why can I buy a D45 and it's going to have plastic pins? Why doesn't it have ivory pins? The next person might say, I can't believe I bought a D42 and it doesn't have the persimmon pins that I like. That's the problem. I think Martin's definitely dedicated to keeping the cost down and expecting that you might be replacing your bridge pins. They have no idea what you'd replace them with. So why add an extra $100 expense or so at the onset if you're going to just yank them out of there anyway? I think that's important to note. Uh, Martin does recognize you want better bridge pins than come with it, but they can't know which ones you would choose. And also better is, a, uh, better is always a matter of opinion. There are people who absolutely love their Martin guitar with the plastic bridge pins and see no reason to change them. Uh, but a mutual friend of ours had reached out to me privately uh, earlier in the year um, because of her, you know, her beloved guitar. She's a guy of one of the famous signature model uh, artist guitars and and, but she was like, she was really just in the mood for some kind of change that would be reversible. And we had discussions um, over the internet about the sort of thing you would do with customers. Uh, you know, well, what is it that you want to change? What are you thinking about? What are you doing this? And even she didn't really know, but we talked about what, what she does like in tone and that sort of thing. And I made 
some suggestions. And then at Martinfest, I slipped her a, uh, a, a set of uh, bridge pins that I will mention when we get to that material. And oh, you almost gave it away. <laughs> I almost gave it away. But uh, yes, but anyway, um, so so uh, I hope she likes them. I haven't actually her, uh, reached out to her since then to find out what she thought of them. So anyway, uh, plastic bridge pins, there's nothing wrong with them. It's just like saying, you know, there's nothing wrong with the type of saddle or the type of nut or the type of tuners or, you know, that there we're still talking about wonderful professional level guitars that sound wonderful. And, and this is really about options, about tweaking and about trying new things. And so, so, uh, and I mentioned in the beginning, we're talking about looks at first, you can stay within plastic bridge pins and change the look of your guitar. So, so what are your options right now that you can buy at Mari's music that is uh, staying in plastic bridge pins? What does, for somebody who, let's say, is a Martin uh, guitar person and has a modern Martin guitar, so we're right now talking about slotted bridge pins, and slotted bridge pins have a slot running down them where the, where the string sits. And so you're supposed to line that slot up, pointing straight up toward the uh, fingerboard, and the ball end of the string goes down inside. Unslotted bridge pins are for bridges that have slots cut into them, which is what they did in the old days. And depending on your brand of guitar, and, and in some cases, even, uh, even just specific model, you can get slotted bridges. Um, you know, a slotted bridge will come with your guitar that have the slots in the bridge. And so that's where the, the string goes down. And so the pin itself is not slotted, it's perfectly round. So please bear that, you know, smooth all the way around. And, and so bear that in mind when you're ordering your bridge pins, you gotta make sure you're either getting slotted or non-slotted based on the kind of uh, bridge that you have. That's right. And you found a way to combine a lot of my talking points all in the same couple of sentences, but I will definitely address that. When you're buying bridge pins from Maury's Music, every one of our bridge pins are slotted except those for the Martin Authentic series, and we'll dive into that deeper later. But for the most part, today we are talking about slotted bridge pins because most of the guitars we're talking about do not have slotted bridge pin holes. But to answer your question about which plastic pins are accessible, we do offer the Martin bridge pin sets direct from Martin. They're the same parts you can buy from the Martin website and that you get on a Martin guitar as stock. We offer the plastics in a black pin with an abalone dot, a black pin with a white dot, a white pin with an abalone dot, a white set with a black dot, and you can also get a white set of plastic pins from Martins with a faux tortoise shell. So if you wanna just get an extra set of bridge pins that are supposed to be on your guitar the way it came from Martin, you certainly could do that too at Mari's Music, and we don't, I was gonna say we don't exterminate, we don't uh, discriminate, <laughs> we don't exterminate either. Uh, you can certainly just get an extra set of pins for your guitar without making a leap into a different material. That's the question we get asked most often when someone's buying a guitar from us. When you're on our website and you're looking at the guitars we sell, we always ask you in drop-down menu choices, would you like to upgrade the saddle? Would you like to upgrade the bridge pins? So on and so forth. And the most asked question we get when we're on the phone with a the customer, they've committed to buying the guitar, they want to get the best they can, what should I do with the bridge pins? And I'll tell you on, on this podcast the same thing I tell them. If you're not sure, don't do anything yet. Because it, like Spoon said a few minutes ago, it's extremely easy to do and it's entirely reversible. Many customers who, who ask me that question because they're not sure what they want would best be served receiving the guitar, play it for a little while, get to know it, get to know exactly what it's doing, and then ask yourself maybe after a few weeks, do I want more treble? Do I want more bass? Do I want, you know, insert any quality here? Do I like it exactly the way it is? You might be surprised to hear, sometimes a customer will call and say, I want to get a set of bridge pins. And I'll say, well, what shift would you like to see in the tone or the response of your guitar? Well, nothing. And then I'll tell them, well, then don't change your bridge pins. Well, I'm told that I should. Well, no, you, you if you're the one that thinks it sounds exactly the way it should, I'm going to save you some money and some shipping time. You're done. And, and there are those people that want to explore this idea, but after a brief conversation, they can't admit. I'll say, you know, is your guitar just a little bit too bright? And they'll say, honestly, no. And I'll say, could you just use a little bit more low end or a little bit more sustain? And they'll say, honestly, no. You're done. You, you're, you're in the lucky minority. You know, 
hang the phone up and play your guitar because there are those customers and those players that really have done it. They've got the guitar they want and it really is ready. So the point of this podcast at least to be transparent, there are some players who do like the idea of looking into this, but they wouldn't actually benefit from buying some. Well, except for the aesthetics. So again, going back, if you have white bridge pins, but you want black bridge pins, or you like the look, you've seen those Martin guitars that have the abalone dot uh, on them, and you like the look of that. Um, and particularly for if you have a guitar that has an abalone rosette, for example, um, and most of the Martins that come with pearl uh, trim will come with abalone dots. Or maybe you uh, simply you simply like to go um, uh, the other way around. You want to go with the you know white rather than black. And so you know for aesthetic reasons, you can also change for that. And Mari hasn't uh, mentioned there are certain more Martin pins. Do they still make the ones that actually have the uh, Martin name spelled out across the six pins? Uh, we offer those in bone. Uh, that's not something from Martin per se, but we certainly do carry them, but they're not available in plastic. Oh, I see. I, do. I was wondering about that. Okay. Well, there we are. Because I've been, you know, for years, I was always a little disappointed that there are no anagrams that work with those six letters. So as far as I know, not in English <laughs> language. So you can't like take Martin and change it to say, you know, some, yeah, I don't know, some other, you know, funny word. But uh, <laughs> Is that like my brother used to take the no L uh, around Christmas time and, and make it say Leno and my mom would get upset? <laughs> exactly. I always thought it'd be kind of, you know, be kind of a prank at Martin Fest to, you know, change somebody's pins around or whatever, but <laughs> it, you, can't, you can't get it to spell anything. But anyway, yes. So uh, aesthetics and um, aesthetics can matter too, but we're mainly going to be talking about tone. So let's move on from plastic because people typically have a guitar with plastic pins. So Mari, what, uh, it, what tends to be the, the most popular or the, or the most uh, sold material um, other than plastic bridge pins? Well, I usually hate when you ask me that because I have to think, but in this case, there's no thinking necessary. Bone bridge pins, size 1.3 ebony dot. I cannot tell you how often we sell bone 1.3 ebony, like we like to call it as far as what the baggie says. There is no doubt the best selling bridge pins we sell are bone bridge pins from Martin. And for whatever reason, customers seem to like the dark ebony inlay. So bone 1.3 ebony is the king of the mountain, and it's a pretty far trip back down to number two because they just we almost can't keep those in stock well as, as mr St spock famously said uh fascinating i'm i didn't know that that the ebony dot that the black dot is the is the most sold but i can see that since most martins have come with an ebony bridge and so it, it matches the bridge and if you are playing a martin uh from the pre reimagined standard series that had a black pick guard for example or even going back, yeah, it's the Style 18 guitars that had black binding and and uh, Style 21 guitars that had black binding in the between 66 and the modern era. Um, I think that's that's pretty fascinating. Um, do you sell bone that have a tortoise? Do they do tortoise dots? We do. When you look at the bone pins from mauriesmusic.com, you can choose ebony dot, tortoise dot, abalone dot, or plain. That's interesting. So I could see also going with abalone if you... If I mean abalone, when you have you know a pearl rosette, like I said, or going with tortoise, if you have tortoise binding and a tortoise pickguard, I could see why people would want to go that way. But there's something about you know the wood that people like the idea of the wooden dot and because of, you know the wooden bridge and the wooden guitar and all that. So I, I, I it makes total sense to me that now that you said it that the ebony dot on bone pins. So when somebody asks you about tone and bone pins, what do you typically tell them? Well, the, the typical recipe is bone pins are going to give you added brightness, added strength to string definition and clarity, and a little bit more volume and sustain. And when, when I say that, I mean from plastic. So if I forget to make that reference along the way of the rest of this program, when I'm going to talk about what a bridge pin can do in comparison, it's a comparison from the stock plastic. So somebody that you know, we talked about strings a couple of episodes ago. If you like the way that strings sound when they have some life left in them and then they start to decay. And of course, you know, you eventually have to change your strings no matter what your bridge pins are. A set of bone pins will certainly add a little bit of clarity and liveliness 
and I wouldn't necessarily put a, a, a day on the calendar or tell you that it's going to give you an extra week or two, but the, the zing and the, uh, the upper harmonics and the upper overtones and the trebles will sound a little brighter longer than if you put the plastic pins in there. So bone seems to be one of the more popular ideas, and it's not to say that customers don't also come to us looking for a warmer tone or for, uh, for other reasons, but the bone will certainly give you clarity and brightness, and you're going to get a little more volume because it's the anchor point there to help where the string vibrates and moves the saddle in motion and everything else that goes along with the physics of what's happening there when the string meets the, meets the pin. Well, that too is a uh, very interesting uh, explanation I have always been enthralled with uh, the way people describe tone and um, particularly when it's dealing with musical tone. Uh, I have a, uh, my own thoughts or you can call it a theory after all these years that music is so new to our species compared to most experiences that we have almost no language dedicated to it. We only tend to speak in metaphor like bright or warm or dark or uh, things, things of that nature that relates to other senses, sight, touch even. And so you refer to bright and I think bright means different things to different people. But I'm gonna agree with you in general about what you just said. And I'll say for people who are familiar with uh, different materials for saddles, what you described can be uh, used for a bone saddle, comparing a bone saddle from a micarta saddle, a uh, bone saddle from a, uh, or even a bone nut from a wooden nut. But uh, that bone, um, and I think when you're talking saddles, the difference is much, much greater and more noticeable in terms of what it does for the guitar. But certainly you're going to get an increase in clarity, and a detail in, uh, you called it the zing that you called it. And I think new bone saddles have a lot of that and that kind of mellows after a while. And cause it can, a brand new bone saddle can sound strident at first until it kind of breaks in where, you know, fits into the, you know, sets down in and settles in and the slots get, you know, kind of worn down a little bit. But yes, greater sustain, greater, uh, like you said, uh, more details in the harmonics and it's more noticeable. Um, I'm, I'm avoiding using bright, but I'd say it's more noticeable in the highs, in the trebles, in the higher overtones coming off of the wound strings and also in that, that detail. And so going from plastic to bone pins is going to actually increase all of that, like you said, but to a lesser degree than changing saddles, the ch saddle material. It's much subtler, but it's most certainly there. And um, so uh, it's a good choice for people who feel they um, wish that their guitar wasn't quite so dark and, and murky sounding because of the uh, you know, the, the rosewood and spruce combination or, or something like that, or people who are just looking for it, uh, increased um, uh, detail and sustain, like you said. Um, so I can see why bone is very popular. You've shied people away, I think, from, well, don't change it if you don't, uh, don't like the sound. The nice thing about bridge pins is, again, instantly reversible. And I think a lot of people just like putting on a new set of strings after you haven't had a new set of strings for a long time, you forget the potential of that guitar. And I think sometimes upgrading from plastic to bone or to some other material uh, will also give somebody that experience. It's like, I didn't know I needed this, but I'm glad I made the change. So uh, I would also say you, people shouldn't be afraid, particularly bone. We're not talking about an enormous financial investment when we're talking about some of these materials. Um, some of them are more expensive than others, but, um, but a switch to bone, I think often is, is worthwhile for more people than not. 
Now you just threw me a softball to give you a quick segue here. We're talking about changing strings and changing pins. I'm gonna ask you guys who are listening, if you're thinking about experimenting with bridge pins, don't do it exactly at the same time that you change the strings. I can't tell you how many people have called us up and said, I wanna, I just ordered an HD28 from you. Can you please change the strings? Can you please put an ivory saddle in there? And can I please get a set of ebony pins? And I'll ask them, are you sure? And they'll say, well, why? Well, won't you, won't some part of you ask yourself, I love the way this sounds. Is it the bridge pins? Is it the saddle? Is it the guitar? What I like to recommend, if you have the patience for it, if you're going to make a change, make a change independently. So get your guitar, play it a little while, and then change the bridge pins with that same set of strings. And then play that for a couple of weeks and then change the strings. And then play that a couple of weeks and then maybe change the saddle. If you do it all in one shot, I mean, don't get me wrong, if you're if you're a player who's already done this kind of thing and you know what you like and you have four other guitars dressed up that way and that's just something you know you're going to do, well then it's extremely uh, it's extremely convenient for us to do it for you. Once you receive your guitar, you start playing it and you have nothing to do. That's smart. But if you're not sure what you want, uh, I, I do recommend considering making one change at a time. Yeah, I think that's very, uh, very good advice. And I think for people who like to experiment and tweak, uh, that's always important that make sure you're only making one change at a time. And, um, and no matter what it is that you're, you know, tweaking uh, for tone. So yeah, so that's uh, bone. So what would you say you said there's a big distance between those pins? Well, first, we're just talking about the ebony dot bones, pins, what's second place other after the ebony dots? Uh, that would most likely be tortoise. I think the bone with tortoise inlay, if we look at the, in the most recent shipment of all of our bridge pins, if the bridge pin box is as big as a loaf of bread, half of that box is going to be taken up with bone pins, first of all. And most of those are going to be the bone ebony, and a second place would be bone tortoise. And now I'm on the website. I just saw these great bone bridge pins with abalone stars. So you have a black field with an abalone star, and I had forgotten all about those. So I would imagine, depending on your particular guitar and the look you're going for, that actually looks pretty fabulous. And I could see somebody wanting to do that if they had one of those, you know, fancier than 45 uh, style Martins or the Blue Ridges, because the Blue Ridge. Uh, Abalone guitars are really, um, really fancy looking. You know, they, uh, they with their, those fancy headstocks and all the abalone uh, inlays and stuff, I could see somebody got really liking these stars. Or if you're going to go for something like if you were a lucky owner of the original Johnny Cash D35, something like that, I bet you those pins would look fabulous. So uh, very cool. And they even have a star in uh, inlay uh, end pin for the strap hole. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. I, I didn't realize you guys had this. It is worth mentioning. If you find a set of bridge pins that you like here, we almost always do offer a strap button and an end pin to match. So that's a, a pretty common thing. If someone's going to buy a set of pins and they want to do a strap button, even if you already have the traditional stock Chrome strap button, you can buy a replacement strap button that literally matches up with the bridge pins and it looks really sharp. Yes. Yeah. And now I see you actually have, I don't know uh, how many letters you have, but it says bone bridge pins with single letter inlay. So you can actually uh, spell out any uh, six letters that you want. Is that correct? You can buy those? You can. You can yeah. buy a single pin with any letter and, and oftentimes somebody will spell out uh, their name or their family name. And a mm -hmm. good friend of ours, Matt Filer from Jim Thorpe, uh, I probably shouldn't say a lot of this part on the podcast, but uh, we did a jam last year for J-Mac's 50th birthday. And those of you listening that are fans of Seinfeld, I think it's Kramer and it was a, a license plate and it was A letter letter M-A-N. You could even spell that uh, on your guitar. <laughs> well, I'm just thinking now TSP would look pretty good on my guitar, um, but I don't use uh, bone bridge pins these days, so I'll, I will... We'll, have to stop talking about that until we do the big reveal of what kind of bridge pins I do use. What you could do is you could spell T-T-S-S-P-P. That's true, but I could just see, you know, having T-S-P and um, have it like spread out across, um, I guess because it's an even number, so you don't get a center. So I'll have to think on this, um, but I'm glad I, uh, I'm glad I saw this. So I'm going to 
start thinking about how I could improve the looks of my guitar with letter bridge pins. Well, now I, I thought we talked about this, uh, no online shopping while we're recording the podcast. Well, fair enough, fair enough. But I saw, but now I see also, and then you also have, uh, for you call them for the authentic series, but these would be for vintage guitars or any guitar that's made with a slotted bridge. There are people, uh, our friend uh, Tone Guy, as he's known on the internet, uh, Tony, Tony Phillips, <laughs> um, he actually slots his own bridges on his uh, some of his modern mar um, modern Martins that don't have slotted bridges, he will slot the bridges and use non-slotted bridge pins. He thinks it oh. actually improves the tone. So, uh, and he is the tone guy. <laughs> so, uh, so these are for uh, slotted bridges. You can get them in abalone, you can get them in uh, ebony and, uh, and plain. Uh, oh, you could spell that with the six letters, T-O-N-G-U-I, right? Oh yeah, you absolutely could. Hmm. Oh, it's a good Christmas hmm. gift idea. Just no, saying. He, he, he does have a birthday once a year. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, every year. And um, okay, so that's, so that's bone. So other than bone, what have you found uh, gets the, the most positive feedback from the more exotic materials that are available? Well, recording this episode in 2022, I would certainly say the new Martin Lux bridge pins, the liquid metal, have really made a big impact. And uh, I'm not sure how much experience you've had with those, but just last week, our guest Tim Teal uh, admitted he was part of the reason that those things came to fruition. And finding out about those, those bridge pins was really exciting along the way because you'll remember they made their debut almost secretly along the, along the way with some really interesting limited editions across some other NAM releases going back to maybe, was it 2018, 2019? They've kind of snuck those I, things in there. Funny, I meant to even look that up. I do remember, I'm trying to think if it was the, what was the very first model? I do remember there being a walnut guitar with a walnut top, highly figured uh, walnut that had them. And, but sometimes I get those Lux uh, bridge pins mixed up with the carbon fiber bridge plate. And they may have both debuted on the same model, but that's interesting. That's something I actually meant to ask him. And we got talking about so many other things that it, I did not go into great detail about that. But um, for people who are not familiar, uh, Lux is a brand name. And what they're really made out of it is a material that I think is itself may be a, a brand name is liquid metal. And what liquid metal really is is a very uh, exotic glass. The molecular structure of this material is actually a glass. The way that the molecules are arranged in this material is, uh, and glass itself is actually a liquid. I know that the, in the day-to-day -day world, we don't think of glass as being a liquid, but if you've seen those old, very, very old windows and older buildings, you'll see how they've kind of warped and stuff because gravity has, they're better at making glass now some, in that respect, but it's literally an extremely solid liquid. And the reason this is important is unlike other metals, true metals, it doesn't dampen the vibrations that make sound. So as the vibration from the string is going, up against that bridge pin that's holding it in place, it has virtually no dampening effect. There's no energy lost at all as that energy passes through that bridge pin and that and the part of the string that is hugging that bridge pin. So all the energy that's going through into the pin, there's no, that word I'm sorry, I've been looking for all this time is absorption. There's no absorption of energy. So all of that tone, tone producing energy from the string makes its way to the bridge plate and is, is not affected by the bridge pins at all. If it's affected in any way, it's in a positive uh, way. And because liquid metal absolutely increases volume and, and particularly sustain. The liquid metal bridge pins have noticeably, uh, startlingly improved sustain and not just regular sustain, I'm talking about the fundamental sustain of the fundamental note. It actually stays up and keeps its volume and its clarity and its focus longer before it starts to drop off and decay. So we're not talking about necessarily the sustain of the sound chamber when you play a chord and let it ring and ring and ring or play a note and it's triggering all these 
beautiful equi sympathetics and all that. We're talking about the actual fundamental note from the actual string being played uh, will remain louder and sustain at that level longer if you're using liquid metal bridge pins. It's a, it is a pretty amazing material. And uh, if, you, if people are into this kind of stuff, I highly recommend you look up liquid metal and, and start reading about it and how, how it was orig originated and, and how it's used in the world. It's really cool. Oh, yeah. And if you're not sure what these really are doing, uh, it's funny. If you buy a set of liquid metal bridge pins and put them in your hand and drop them on the table and then drop your old plastic pins on the table, you're not going to see what happens and have any hard time believing that they do make a difference. It's like dropping bricks. I mean, these things are so heavy and so <laughs> thick. And I often tell people, if, if you think bridge pins don't make a difference, what if you put a sponge in that hole to hold the, the string in place and you know pretend it was packed solid enough. You can just imagine that something awfully porous and inadequate holding a string in place isn't doing it any favors. The mass and the actual material that the bridge pin is made out of has to have some kind of physical difference in the way it couples the string. Uh, just like if you hit a tuning fork and you put it against a wall or put it against a piece of wood, two things vibrating, whatever's interrupting that it, it scientifically has to make a difference and whether or not it's enough of a difference is going to be up for debate, you know, forever. You'll never convince two different people what to believe, but I, I do want to use my opportunity with this program to convince you that try to be open-minded to the fact that bridge pins can make a difference, even if it isn't big enough to warrant spending money. It's not fair to say that there's no difference whatsoever. And just, just saying it again, dropping a, a set of liquid metal pins on a table would immediately tell you, wow, that's, that has to have a factor. And again, it's, it's a personal thing. It's personal experience. Some people cannot hear the, uh, the details in overtones and, and undertone and all that stuff, the way that some other people can, some people are, can perceive it more as we age our hearing changes. Um, and, uh, and so it's, and it's, you know, for most of it, it deteriorates over the years, but, but I, uh, you know, people have always said I seem to be able to hear uh, detail in, in tone that uh, a lot of other people can't. But enough people say, you're absolutely right. You know, when I've written my tone descriptions and my guitar reviews and stuff, and I'll get email from all over the world, people saying, I, I can't believe you described the tone of my guitar. I have that model in, and I've never been able to put it into words the way that you put it into words. But that sounds that's what my guitar sounds like. On the, on the other hand, it's a personal experience of what do you like? What is, what is better? What is good? Is it improvement? Uh, different is not always good. Many of us, and I'm including myself, are resistant to change at first. So when I do any kind of change, I first I notice what, how it's different and I notice what's not there compared to what there before, before I start to appreciate what is there and what's being added. So liquid metal bridge pins are certainly not for everybody. Not everybody actually likes the sound of them and, um, and what they do, but uh, other people are just, you know, find it uh, enthralling and astonishing. So, um, and they've, you know, now they use them on, you know, all kinds of models. Uh, have come out with the uh, Lux pins. So some people are lucky enough to get them, not exactly for free, but get them when they buy their Martin guitar, they'll come with the, those pins. And I have uh, I know there are people out there that have purchased a guitar that had those pins and ended up moving the pins into another guitar because they liked what it did to that guitar even more than the guitar it came with. So um, definitely worth checking out. I, I didn't realize they were that popular. I thought we'd get to those toward the end because they're so unusual and exotic. But yeah, they're it's you know it's it is um, like some of the other modern marvels that Martin has experimented with and come out with, like the carbon fiber uh, sandwich bridge plate and things like that. Uh, they definitely help create a unique tone that's going to be different than any of the other bridge pins that we're talking about. And here's something else that I think uh, we need to discuss is the size of the bridge pins because different brands of guitars work best with different sizes. So before we move into these um, more exotic materials uh, after the Lux pins, what size does the modern Martins take? And is there any difference uh, between that and Blue Ridge? 
Ah, well now it's the Frequently Asked Questions podcast with Mari and Spoon. I would love to discuss this because this is something that comes off so often. I, I bet in a 50-hour work week, I spent 25 hours talking about this. And it's important because you don't want to buy the wrong size. When you look at the Martin, first of all, every guitar manufacturer is size dependent. And then within that manufacturer, some years need a different size. Uh, for example, certain Martin guitars take size 1.3. Uh, certain guitars from Martin prior to a certain year might say take size one. And we don't want to get too jumbled here and, and throw too many facts in a blender and confuse you, but you need to know that we certainly do have a bridge pin sizing chart, and you need to look at that when you're ordering your pins. But there's a little bit of a curveball that I want to sort of straighten out. Most modern Martin guitars take size 1.3 if you like the pins to seat flush nice and low. If you want to have pins that sit exactly like they do from the Martin factory, that's going to be size 2A. And the quick answer is they both work. They both hold the string properly, so you're not asked to make a compromise on functionality or which one is more correct. They will both work, but the size 2A will stand up a little bit, and that might bother you when you do some palm muting, or you might not like the way that looks or feels, how they stand up tall and proud. If you like the way that they seat all the way down into the bridge pin hole, you're going to want to go with 1.3 instead. And the catch is, some of our customers will put a size 1.3 pin in before putting the string in, and they'll call and say, this is the wrong size. It falls right out. The size 1.3, by design, is to be so loose that when you're holding the string in place, while you're tuning, uh, pull the slack up, you know, pull the ball end up to the bridge plate, start tuning the guitar, and hold the bridge pin in place for a couple of turns. That's the way a 1.3 will fit. So I'm almost ready to start taking this off the website because it does cause confusion, but I want to keep it there because some customers do want the opportunity to decide. If you want it to sit just like a regular stock Martin pin, 2A is the way to go. And part of the reason I'm saying that is the Martin bridge pins on our website that are from Martin Guitar, made by Martin you know, we, we get them from the Martin factory. The Martin Lux pins and the Martin brand plastic pins are only available in 2A. When you get into other materials that we sell, we offer them in 2A and 1.3. But somebody looking at Martin buying the Martin Lux bridge pins, for example, 2A is the only choice. So you're stuck with having them sit a little bit high. Martin's not sending anything out of the factory with a 1.3 style, but they both will work. That's a very important explanation, uh, Mari. So I, I'm glad we took the time to say that. I've used both. I don't notice it that much. Um, some uh, older guitars that I've had, you know, they, they will sit way down in the holes and uh, just because the pins, uh, I'm rather the holes, uh, you know, wear, wear after a while and get a little bigger. I, that, you know, I don't notice any difference uh, certainly not enough difference for it to matter uh, to me whether they're tall or, or sit down in the hole. Other than, like you said, having to like put my thumb on the pin while I'm winding the string at first, and that's really uh, not a big deal. So we've gone to the Lux pins, which is the uh, amazing modern futuristic material way to go about this. Uh, what are some of the uh, other materials available uh, for Mars Music uh, in terms of bridge pins? Well, to really encapsulate all of them, your other choices are buffalo horn, walrus ivory, persimmon, and ebony. And you'll notice two of those are made out of wood. We began this conversation talking about how some of the old materials, plastic came along in the 30s and replaced some parts that were actually made out of wood. Another popular option here at Maury's Music is ebony bridge pins. And if I quizzed you on the spot, what do you think ebony would do to your tone coming from plastic? Well, that's an interesting question because I um, typically have had ebony pins on guitars because that's the way they came. And um, for me, I think ebony pins mellow out uh, any stridency, any sort of high-end harshness, uh, you know, but some people would call that bright. See, I'm, I don't like to use the word bright because bright can be a positive word in some minds and a negative word in other minds. So... I'm talking about the kind of bright that I would associate with glare, with uh, too bright, it, uh, and um, and I think it it helps a guitar sound wittier in some respects. That's exactly how we feel. We recommend if you want some more warmth, 
maybe a little bit more bass, even if getting a little bit more bass is from the illusion of losing a little bit of high end. If your guitar could benefit from sounding a little bit warmer, ebony pins are always the way to go. And especially those people, you might remember back years and years ago, uh, on the unofficial Martin Guitar Forum, it seemed like everybody wanted a bone saddle and ebony pins. And I think part of that was to your argument a few minutes ago, sometimes a brand new bone saddle might sound strident and the ebony bridge pins will take off that effect a little bit. And pairing those two things together, going from what you might have had in a plastic saddle and plastic pins, you know, for less than a hundred bucks, it, it's a really nice thing to try. And ebony bridge pins are probably one of the most popular non-bone pin that we sell because as far as the wooden materials, ebony bridge pins, like you said, are found on some Martin guitars to begin with. And a set of ebony pins with an abalone inlay, that's definitely one of our best sellers across the board. Well, I would say, um, and there again, yeah, ebony, so you get the dark, you know, black look of, of the ebony, but you can get it, you can get it with the abalone so that, you know, colors it up some and adds a touch of, uh, of you know, pizzazz, if you will, um, panache to it. But um, I think a lot of people like the look of the black pins on the black bridge. And I think they like, uh, uh, they like the traditional aspect of the ebony pins. And ebony is a very dense wood, so it, it works very well as a bridge pin, though it definitely affects the sound of the guitar. And I think guitars that are already very dark um, because of the kind of rosewood and the spruce that's being matched with them, um, ebony uh, can make uh, a difference. If you remove it and you put in plastic or something else, you're going to find you're getting a little increase out of that darkness and a little more detail. And which is what I found, I, I, uh, ebony is often used on uh, uh, mahogany guitars, ebony pins. And, and a lot of people say that, you know, mahogany is brighter than um, rosewood. Um, you take a mahogany guitar and you put in a new bone saddle, it's going to be brighter still. And the ebony can kind of, like you mentioned, counteract that. Uh, whether you keep that will go with the ebony pins forever or only you know until uh, that saddle breaks in that's a nice way to do it it can have the opposite effect when you're dealing with the darker murky rosewood uh, guitars and um, which is why i had ebony pins in my guatemalan rosewood guitar for a long time and then uh, decided to to uh, change them out and experiment with some other things before i settled on the the pins that i use today but what would you say to somebody um, like me that called up and said, you know, my guitar is already, uh, already a very dark, murky, lush Martin guitar, and in terms of the bottom end and the, those low mids, um, I like the look of ebony, but I don't want to increase that uh, darkness down there. Um, what would you recommend? That's where buffalo horn comes in and fits the bill perfectly. Whenever somebody wants the sound of a bone pin, but the look of an ebony pin, or just f frankly, if they want to sound like bone, but they want a dark black look, buffalo horn is certainly the way to go. To my ears, it's a great, great alternative for the darker appearance, but the sound of bone. So regardless of where somebody's coming from in their point of view, if you want the sound of a bone bridge pin, but you like the looks of an ebony bridge pin, a buffalo horn is offered both in a plane and with an abalone inlay. And we don't sell as many of them as we do the ebony pins, but uh, that's really the way I would suggest. And just so people are clear, uh, when we talk about buffalo horn pins, we're not talking about North American bison or European bison. We're talking about water buffalo. So these are Asian water buffalo, those big, enormous beasts with those big, gigantic horns that you see, uh, you know, pulling plows in the rice paddies and that kind of stuff. That's the, uh, that's where they're coming from, from a, uh, a Asian water buffalo. So, um, hmm. but yes, a very, a very good point. They uh, look very similar to ebony. They, um, it depends on the, uh, the brand, but some of them have more color in them. They're not jet black. They look more similar to uh, everybody's seen the ebony that's being used these days that isn't perfectly black, that is catching on, becoming more and more popular. Uh, sometimes you'll see some natural uh, color variation in uh, water buffalo pins, but but you, they're usually, uh, you know, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between ebony and, and water buffalo. 
and they can look quite attractive. I think they reflect light really nicely, and um, so they have a you know shapeliness to them, where um, sometimes ebony pins kind of lose their shape when they're in a black bridge. They all kind of just meld together, and I think the I think the what I've seen when I, I've had I've used water buffalo uh, pins. And, uh, and I have uh, I gifted my set to somebody else after I found the pins that I like best for my guitar. And they're enjoying it. Their guitar is uh, Madagascar Rosewood and, and European Spruce. And uh, they've been happy with the pins. So, uh, and again, an interesting and somewhat exotic choice for people who want the dark look, but don't necessarily want the darker tone. There you go. And like you mentioned, walrus ivory, we're talking about the tusks of walrus, but these are not just walrus tusks. These are basically found walrus tusks. They're not like harvested from live walruses. They're slightly, you've heard that we use fossil, you've heard the terms fossilized ivory, but they're not really talking about fossils in the sense of, uh, you know, mineralized to the point of dinosaur bones, but that they are old uh, when they're recovered, and there is some mineralization going on in in those uh, in the material that they use to make those pins. And what would you say? Uh, what's your opinion of those pins in terms of their effect on tone? Well, until the Lux bridge pins came around, I would say they were definitely the Cadillac of bridge pins, and in some respects, they still are. Uh, but if we talked about the bone bridge pins to start this program. Walrus ivory, if, let me say, if, if bone is a really, really nice Chevy, uh, the walrus ivory really is the Cadillac. And it just gives you <laughs> the greatest increase when you're talking about volume, sustain. Maybe they're not exactly as bright as bone, but they're almost as bright. Uh, but the harmonics and overtones are just pushed, you know, past the limits of bone. And if you like that sort of thing, and you like knowing that your guitar has got the best material it can have where the bridge pins go, um, it's sort of an elite choice. It's not necessarily as popular, uh, mostly because of cost. And I don't want to use the term diminishing returns too literally because I don't want to, uh, you know, spend an hour talking about the bridge pins effect and then talk you out of looking towards doing that. But when you go from plastic to bone, the jump is pretty great. And then when you go from bone to ivory, the jump isn't quite as different. But if you want the best, especially when it comes to overtones and harmonics, the ivory really, really does the trick. I used that for almost a year in my guitar and I ended up going back to bone and other materials uh, quite honestly so I could experience what all these bridge pins sound like. I'm always changing my bridge pins so I, I can you know stay relevant and keep my finger on the pulse of things. But except for the Lux bridge pins sneaking in this like these last couple of years and taking the spotlight, the FWI really is some of the best stuff. All right, so we've talked about bone bridge pins, buffalo horn pins, fossilized walrus ivory, the beautiful Martin Lux bridge pins, ebony bridge pins. The only thing we haven't talked about so far, and I don't want to forget, persimmon bridge pins. Aha! Mari has said the secret word. The answer to the trivia question uh, this week is uh, I use persimmon bridge pins, and I tried them on a whim. Uh, after a visit to Mari's Music, and I was really impressed with persimmon bridge pins. Um, if you haven't seen them, they're blonde. They look kind of like maple heading in that direction. Um, they might be mistaken for koa even, but they are made from persimmon, and I was very uh, taken with these bridge pins. Uh, my guitar, for people who don't know, they what used to be sold as Mari's Music in a in an unofficial artist's edition Martin guitar is Guatemalan Rosewood Adirondack Spruce. And uh, Adirondack may not sound to some ears as bassy as Sitka, but I think uh, scientifically it shows that in terms of the bottom, bottom bass string, it actually is. And, and you mix that with a dark, lush rosewood like Guatemalan or Cocobolo, um, or uh, uh, African Blackwood um, or uh, you know, Macassar Ebony, those kind of dark, inky sounding woods. Um, the uh, persimmon bridge pins I found really increase the definition. Um, you ca it, ca it keeps the lushness and the darkness and the bassiness, but it's like 
it's a higher definition to the subtleties of the undertone and the fundamentals and the overtones coming out of the, the bottom end, but also the higher overtones as well. And I've been very, very happy with persimmon pins and highly recommend them. Um, I was delighted to hear from uh, Bill Peebles in Loveland, Ohio, Hey-o! who, um, who uh, unbeknownst to me, uh, bought a set of uh, Persimmon Bridge Pins from Mars Music and, and wrote me to, uh, to tell me how much he loves his, uh, his Bridge Pins in his uh, modern era triple O twenty eight. So, um, and I actually got to hear that um, he, you know, sent me a couple of his uh, practice videos uh, of songs nice. he's been working on and, and really, uh, it really sounds awesome. Really great, colorful sustain and really, um, beautiful resonance to that uh triple o and he's got a great top on it i got to finally see the guitar at martin fest at his first martin fest this year and finally got to see it in person and uh, you know he got a real winner top on that guitar but um but he's really happy with his persimmon bridge pins and and if you order them from mari's music um you can get these you know, with no inlay or abalone inlay and you can also get them with the with the fancy uh martin m-a-r-t-i-n uh, on them even that uh, use the same kind of uh, the letters look very similar to the Martin that you get on style 42 and Vinci style 45. I mean, not Vinci style 45, but the, the C Martin F um, you know, stacked Martin uh, that you get on the headstock. They look very similar to that in terms of the design, but um, yeah, i I'm, I couldn't recommend them uh, enough. So persimmon bridge pins, uh, you could try them certainly in other with other wood combinations, but if you have a nice, lush, dark uh, rosewood sort of guitar and um, and you want a little more definition, but you still want it to sound uh, woody, you still want to hear sound more than uh, you want to hear wood more than string. Is how my brain puts it. Then I I would recommend you give it a good try of the persimmon pins. Awesome. And thank you again, Bill, if you're listening. We appreciate your business. I, I just stole that whole segment. What is, what's your opinion of Persimmon and uh, and what kind of feedback have you gotten from other customers? I was going to say exactly the same things. <laughs> thank you. Good night. Um. <laughs> no, I, if, I'm really honestly, that's one of those materials we haven't had here very long. And I like it a lot. I think it, it, it definitely adds some woody definition to the tone without being as dark as ebony. But uh, in the spirit of being transparent, not just making something up because I'm on the microphone, we haven't had them long enough or sold enough of them to get a really big enough sample size from our audience, really. We have we do okay with them, but they're not big sellers yet. Uh, we I mean, we've been in business since 2003 and selling the other bridge pins, many of the other alternatives for you know 20 years. We've only had these a short time, and I think it's going to be a little bit longer until we can really collect some data from... Uh, uh, and when I say collect data, what I literally mean is customers taking the time to email us or call us after the fact to say how much they like them. Uh, I can say we don't get returns. We don't uh, we don't send them out and, and get them to come back. But until enough of our customers really spend the time to, you know, make descriptions like Bill just did with you, uh, I, I think it's a little bit too new to say. But I'm uh, it's it's a material we wanted to experiment with because we always want to bring new materials uh, to the market. And I can say that I'm glad we did. It's uh, it's not fair to say that uh, we tried them and they failed. So I think they're going to do well. I don't think there's a big big market for wooden bridge pins compared to bone and the and the ivories at least here at Mari's Music. But I think they're really cool. It was great to meet Bill at Martin Fest and hear his Martin guitar as it was stock. But I uh, you'll have to point me towards that video sometime because I'd like to hear it with those pins too. Yeah, I know, I'm not sure it's readily available. He just shared it with me, but he does have, he definitely has some uh, videos on YouTube and stuff, I think. Uh, he did, uh, uh, he's a guy that's he that likes the traditional, uh, what he calls the American Songbook. And we're not talking about Tony Bennett's American Songbook, but like uh, people like John Prine and, and uh you know, Arlo Guthrie, Bob Dylan, you know, he's that kind of a singer songwriter, John Denver and, uh, and to go up to Canada, he's a huge uh, Gordon Lightfoot fan. So that's the kind of the music that he plays. And he did a, a very endearing set for his mother's birthday and uh, that he put online and then also did one uh, for his father's birthday. So uh, 
for it to com commemorate his father's birthday. Um, so uh, those are available on YouTube somewhere. But anyway, um, I think some people will shy away from the persimmon because they look different. They wood and it's a blonde wood. So they look unusual on a, uh, they look unusual like on an uh, ebony bridge. It's just not a traditional look. So I can see why some people would shy away from it. But I, I prefer the tone. And I was, you know, skeptical. I thought persimmon, that's unusual. I can see why people was like, uh, why would somebody want that? I've never heard of that before. And that's kind of what drew me to it. So I was pleasantly surprised at how much I like the sound of them uh, over ebony in this case, because my guitar comes came with ebony, because it was based on uh, pre-war style 21. But I actually like them a lot. And, and just for full disclosure, my uh, Brazilian Rosewood Adirondack Martin Dreadnought. That's an that's as uh, some people know was a uh, was a destroyed uh, 1966 D28, and the back and sides were salvaged. and And our friends at uh, Brothers Music uh, created what was basically a D28 authentic 1937 body with a modern neck for me. I actually used bone pins, uh, un unslotted bone pins in that, basically the same ones that that you would have on an authentic. And then in my uh, C 16 from the 1980s, which is essentially a OM-18 with a skinny neck, I use uh, ebony in that. I took the ebony pins from my uh, Rosewood Triple Lot and put it in that, uh, into that mahogany guitar. So, so I've got two guitars with uh, wood these days and one with bone. Interesting. And I, have, I just had a thought. I don't mean to be a salesman, but can I throw a pitch at you? Sure, certainly. I like the way you play, and I know you do a lot of alternate tunings. I think after we're done this program, you should get on our website, and you should order one set of fossilized walrus ivory that spells out dadgad. You should get another one <laughs> that spells out E-A-D-G-B-E. -E. You should get a third set that spells out open G tuning. And whenever you tune your guitar to a different tuning, you really should replace your bridge pins, and that would make sure that I sell three more sets. There you go. But even more, I could see somebody, there are people out there like Jackson Brown who keeps his certain guitars in a tuning and they're only in that tuning and he switches the guitars based on the tuning. And maybe you could sell 25 sets to Jackson Brown. <laughs> Do you have his number? Uh, uh, yes, I believe his number is, I don't know, how old is he now? I think he just had a birthday last week. 74. Well, happy birthday, Jackson. Happy birthday. I'm sure you're listening. And uh, yeah, and Mari's got a uh, perfect idea for a birthday gift you can buy yourself. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to buy it for you. <laughs> Are you kidding? I've seen his house. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Well, if I'm invited to the party, I'll bring it. Put it that way. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, this was fun. It's been informative. Um, it's actually a very nice day out. Hint, hint. <laughs> you know, I've got guitars to play. And I've got bridge pins to sell, so let's get out of here. Folks, that's going to do it for episode 25 of Martins and More. And it's actually going to do it for season one of Martins and More. So thanks for listening. That's true. We're going to take a little bit of a break and come back fresh and relaxed for season two. This is the last episode of season one, and we'll see you again on November 14th. If there's anything you missed from season one, now's the time to go back and listen. From all of us at Maury's Music, thanks for listening. Hear you later. This has been a presentation of Maury's Music, your trusted source for Martin and Blue Ridge guitars. Find us online at moriesmusic.com. <laughs>